March 15th since uh, 1997. Uh, Anti-police brutality activists around the world, uh, 200 cities and uh, 40 countries have held demonstrations protesting police brutality. So this is an international thing that is going on. Activists all over the world today are having actions to protest particular incidents of police brutality in their countries or in their cities. So it is a significant day, March 15th. For the first time, uh, the International Day of Action is being commemorated here in Memphis. We welcome everyone who has come out today. Uh, it is an important day. In the United States, it has been said, according to a recent report, that so far as black people, every uh, 36 hours, a black person is killed by a law enforcement agent or a security guard in the United States. Now, that was as of July of 2012. I don't know the numbers have changed, but that report said that as of July 2012, every 36 hours in the United States, an African-American, a person of African descent, is killed by some kind of a law enforcement authority. Police, sheriff's deputy, someone working as a security guard. So this is a national epidemic. Police brutality is a national epidemic for black people in the United States. And I want to say that we're not saying that people of other colors, other nationalities have not been killed. They are killed. But it is an epidemic proportions for black people in the United States and other people of color in this country. Here in Memphis, we have a situation where since uh, January of 2012, the Memphis Police Department have killed 14 people. Right? 14 people uh, in just a little over a year. They killed three people in just the last two months. And we'll be talking about that in just a minute so you can get an idea of who these people are. Three of them were teenagers, all right? And so they were not all adult people. Three teenagers among those victims who were killed by the police since January of last year. So we have a serious problem here in Memphis. We have a police department that is a trigger-happy police department. We have a police department that will beat up black people over here, down here in the entertainment district on Beale Street because they feel like the entertainment district should be set aside for white tourists. They really don't want black people to be downtown in, in the city where they live. They don't want us to be downtown in the entertainment district. And if you are a young black man and you happen to be out socializing with uh, a white woman, you are subject to getting beaten up. In fact, a young black man is in federal court over here across the way suing some Memphis police officers right now because he's black. He was out socializing on Mill Street with a young white woman and some black cops, or some white cops, there were some black cops with them. They didn't like that. They didn't like the fact that a young black person was socializing with a white woman. So they beat him up, but well, he's taking them to federal court. These, these are the kind of police we have. We have police officers here who, if they arrest females, women, will force them to have sex with them. And uh, we've been told this by any number of women. They've asked, forced them to have sex, sex or threaten them. If you don't have sex with me, you're going to go to jail. That's the kind of police force we have here. We have police force. We have at least one officer here who has been indicted on prostitution charges. He picked up some prostitutes here in Memphis and drove them across the state line into northern Mississippi. We're not that far from the border with northern Mississippi. So he was arrested, and he's up. I don't know what the state of his prosecution is, but this is a police officer who's running prostitutes across state lines, all right? And we have another police officer, at least two, who have been indicted for rape. One police officer, he has been indicted for raping a family member. This is a corrupt police department. It is a police department that is out of control. The police director, Tony Armstrong, is not able to keep them in control, obviously. And I've only touched just a little bit. We could stand here all day. Over 25 police officers were indicted last year on various crimes, okay? And, and so this is a serious situation that we face in Memphis. But right now, we do have uh, we want to talk about the people who have been killed here in the city of Memphis. 
by the police in the last year or so. And uh, Brother Fadali will come and, and, and talk to us and give us those names and the circumstances in which those people were killed. You, you got a loud okay. voice. You may not hear. Uh, uh, welcome to those of you who have never been here in the city of Memphis. I want to say before I read this body count that in the spirit of Elton Hayes, who was beaten by the police uh, and sheriff department in Memphis in 1974, uh, in the spirit of the Shannon Street Seven, who was killed, executed by the police, seven men killed and executed by the police uh, in Memphis and uh, a numerous other, as a person that's been here all my life, I'm a person that knows about the history of police violence in this city. And the height of police violence is police murder, police killing, what they sometimes call justified homicide. But almost all instances of so-called justified homicide have the same kind of, of uh, ring to it. In other words, there's no other witness other than the police officer who killed the person and because the victim is not able to speak for themselves. We're here to speak for the victim. Body count. Uh, victims of misholding terror in 2012 and 2013. One, Jeremy McCraven, 20 years old, shot to death February 10, 2012. Police claimed that McCraven was the leader of an auto theft ring and was allegedly driving a stolen car when he was killed. He was shot in the back. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled in 1983 that, tenis, that the Tennessee Fleeing Felon Act was unconstitutional and is illegal for police to shoot alleged suspects in the back. Two, William Howland, 41, died on March 10, 2012 after being chased and arrested by police. According to the police, they chased Howlett after his girlfriend said he attacked her. Police admit in a struggle with Howlett, uh, a, a struggle with Howlett, and he then became unresponsive after he was in custody. What did the police do uh, to Howlett to make him unresponsive? He was pronounced dead at the regional medical center. The official cause of his death had never been made public. Three, Randy Green died in March 2012. A friend of his family said that Green, who was blind, was pepper sprayed to death by Memphis police officers on the campus of the University of Memphis while he was attempting to use the library. Why did the police use any force at all against Green, who was just trying to use the library's special faculties for blind people? Why did the police use pepper spray in the first place to subdue a blind man? Four, Dwayne Bailey, 38, shot to death on May the 8th, 2012. According to the police, Bailey was asleep in his car in a store parking lot in South Memphis. Witnesses disputed the claim by police officers that when Bailey woke up, he got out of his car and fought with them. Then the police got to get Bailey back in his car and start, he started driving it, dragging a police officer. He was apparently shot in the back in violation of a U.S. Supreme Court ruling that makes it illegal for police in Tennessee to, to shoot fleeing suspect in the death. An online petition of the Bailey family said he was shot 32 times. Five, Christian Freeman, 19, shot to death on June the 12th, 2012, downtown on Bill Street. Memphis said Freedom Freeman threatened him with a knife. His family said Freedom had mental health problems and the police knew this because they had encountered him in April when he was arrested for disorderly conduct. Freeman was black, a white man, the same day had an open knife in his back pocket and was also described as having behaving erratically and was intoxicated. The white man was arrested without any use of force. The Memphis Police Department has specially trained unit of over 200 officers to handle cases involving people with mental illness. If they had called to talk to, uh, if they had been called to talk to Christian Freeman, he might still be alive today. Furthermore, if he was white, Number six, Fernandez Dowdy, 36, shot to death on June 27, 2012. Police claimed that Dowdy was a hot carjacking uh, suspect whom they chased and they killed him because they mistakenly thought he had a gun. No weapon was ever reduced, produced, excuse me. 
no weapon was ever produced. Witnesses said that the police shot Dowdy in the back, uh, again, the fleeing suspect law. It was still learned, it was later learned that the white female who owned the car had put down a false report that the stall of the car was ever stolen. At least one of the officers who chased Dowdy knew at the time that the officer chase he had not committed a crime. Seven, Lorenzo Davis, 28, died on July the 3rd, 2012, while in police custody. According to police, they chased and arrested Davis in his backyard for allegedly selling drugs. After he was in custody, David was sweating profusely, police said, and then allegedly collapsed. Uh, Brenda Connor, David's mother, said that doctors at Methodist Hospital said her son had severe head injuries, internal bleeding, and a broken leg. According to the doctors, the only drug in his system was Tylenol. Seeking to cover up the fact that the police beat David to death, a report by the medical examiner's office claimed he died of a cocaine overdose. Eight, Dolores F. 54, died on August 26, 2012, as a result of a car crash caused by police officer Alex Beard. According to witnesses, Beard was speeding at the time of the crash. He ignored uh, police regulations to use flashing lights and a siren on his car. Nine, Michaela Roth, 13, the daughter of Dolores F., died with her mother in the car crash on August 26, 2012. They were on their way to a family celebration when the police car driven by Alex Beard hit their car. Ross's father sustained severe injuries in the crash. He was hospitalized for weeks and will never recover from his injury. Number 10, Justin Thompson, 15, shot to death on September 24, 2012, while returning from a store a short distance from his home. Police claimed Thompson was trying to rob an off-duty police officer, Terrence Shaw, who shot and killed the unnamed teenager. In an attempt to cover up what really happened, Police Director Tony Armstrong <coughs> asked, asked the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation to conduct an investigation which cleared Shaw of any wrongdoing. The Shelby County Attorney General Amy Warwick has continued to cover up, refusing to release the findings of the TBI's investigation. <coughs> Excuse me. Charles Livingston shot to death December, this is number 11. Charles Livingston, 32, shot to death on December 27, 2012. According to police, Livingston was killed while fleeing from a McDonald's restaurant, which he allegedly robbed. Police claimed that Livingston pulled a gun at them. He was apparently shot in the back in violation of the state law that makes it illegal for police to shoot fleeing suspects in the back. 12. Donald Moore shot to death on January 11, 2013. Police claimed when they arrived at Moore's house to serve a warrant for animal cruelty, he, he pointed a gun at them. Questions remain as to whether the police knocked on uh, Moore's door and identified themselves or not. They did not, they did, they just uh, did, broke down his door, making uh, Moore think that they were burglars. It was a, one of those uh, uh, not, no, 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 no warrant, you know, with no knock, but no knock warrant. Uh, Stephen Askew, shot to death, this is number 13. On January 17, 2013, Askew was asleep in his car waiting for his girlfriend to come home from work. Police who called were called to the area on another matter, claimed they approached Askew's car to find out why he was slumped over. Askew, according to them, pointed a gun at them and they killed him. Askew was licensed to carry a gun. An attorney for the family had called for an independent investigation saying that a video of, of, of the incident disputes the police version of the events. And number 14, Horace White, 63, shot to death on March 10, 2013. They claimed they had reports of a man with a shotgun walking in South Memphis where White lived. The 12th Amendment, the uh, Second Amendment of, of the Constitution gives the people the right to bear arms. When police confronted White in front of his own home, they claimed he fired at them when, he told, when they told him to put the gun down. 
A neighbor of White disputed the police account saying White never pointed a gun at anyone or threatened anyone with it. And we want to say that uh, we are going to follow all of these matters uh, and try to get justice for these people.